Located at a crook in the Harlem River bordered by a sanitation department facility to the north and a matrix of coal yards along the river's edge to the east, Riverton was Metropolitan Life's unwanted stepchild. Built in 1947, it was offered up as a solution to housing problems that had been brewing in Harlem since the 1930s. Returning war vets and their families, coupled with newcomers from the South and the Caribbean, had burdened the housing stock to the point of crisis. Facing various lawsuits, Metropolitan, with the support of construction czar Robert Moses, prevailed in its desire to keep its properties lily white. We were living on the west side, but we only had a kitchenette, and we had a young son, my son Kenneth. And we didn't have a private kitchen, nor a private bath. And in that area on the west side, they were not renting to blacks. I would go to the building, and one building I will never forget, the super met me, and he was black. And he told me to my face, we don't rent to colored in here. Years later, with the benefit of a 25-year tax abatement, Metropolitan eventually committed to build Riverton, its Jim Crow counterpart to the other three communities. But this is not a story of victimization, although it very well could be. Instead, it is a story of a community that took lemons and made lemonade. Uh, my name is Constance Wright, and uh, uh, I've had a very career in Harlem, um, having had the fortune also of having been born here. I became aware of Riverton um, after I became an adult, and the war, World War II had occurred and ended. I was married and looking for what we all designated as a decent apartment in those days. And then Riverton um, began to be the, the operative word. I was among the first three tenants on the first moving day to uh, occupy the, and it was, there, there was great, great joy, you know, there was, there was, there was high emotions, you know, that this great event was taking place. That shows you the sorry state of race relations. But, but we enjoyed it. We, a triumph is a triumph, nevertheless. The one thing about it is when the Riverton was being built by, or put together by Metropolitan, they had selected a Mr. Um, Clifford Alexander to put it together, to be the resident manager. He, in turn, handpicked, uh, I think, the 1,214 clients in this development. He handpicked the physicians and he handpicked all the professionals. Then he handpicked the people to live in the development. I they came up to visit you where you lived and they went through your apartment and they looked in every room to see how you kept house. And they made their notes and came to their decisions. I remember Puggy Bell was one of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Check you out, you know, see what sort of a housekeeper you were. Mm -hmm. They used to come on Sundays, I remember, and visit. At that time, they were really screening uh, people uh, very carefully because they wanted uh, a very special uh, kind of uh, grouping of, of, of people who had certain uh, aspects of education, certain aspects of other things that were good for the community. And, and they tried to put a, a mix of, of people who have a variety of uh, skills and, and experiences and so forth and, and put them in, in a place where it was really a neighborhood. As I read little blurbs about people who had lived in Middleton at one time, I was like, oh, I used to babysit for them, but I didn't know that's who they were, you know. And Eddie Hayward lived in the Eddie Hayward city. lived in the same building I lived That's in. That's right. Right, right. I, and that was, I was like, and Billy Eckstein lived over in um, 2171 for a short period. When it, he was it was a community that was very, very close-knit. He had some great 
fabulously bright, ambitious, uh, very accomplished people that were not only there but have come out of the Riverton. Fritz Alexander and Dave Dinkins, they lived, um, I believe it was 2190 uh, Madison Avenue. Uh, a lot of folks came out of the Riverton. You know, the Riverton was a uh, metropolitan uptown place. They had uh, downtown, they had Peter Cooper Village and Stuyvesant Town, and uptown uh, Riverton. I used to tell people the Riverton was so well maintained that if two snowflakes fell, there were five people out there with shovels cleaning it up. And it, it was so very well maintained, and it is to this day. We really wanted a nice place to raise our child. We visited over there several times, and we noticed the playground, the apartment. It was just like heaven. We had a difficult time getting into Riverton. My parents were policyholders in Pittsburgh during the Depression, and they had five children, and all of us had a policy, including themselves. I think it opened up in 1947. Now, this is 10 years later, and people are still clamoring to get into Riverton. And finally, it did happen. And I'm gonna tell you, we finally got the apartment. The people came to vis visit us where we were living to see, I guess, if we were clean, to see if we were acceptable. And uh, so finally we were given a date to move. And uh, I remember having Kenneth in the carriage and I rolled from 113th Street between Broadway and Riverside Drive all the way over to Riverton. I had the keys to the apartment. I just wanted to look at it. It was like a mansion. And if you've come from a kitchenette, you can imagine what a two-bedroom apartment is like. I, after staying in the apartment that afternoon, I didn't want to go back. And I just decided I would spend the night there. I never went back to the kitchenette except to move. The uh, couple that helped us get in uh, were musicians. Uh, it was John Collins, uh, the wonderful guitarist who played with Nat Cole. And and uh, uh, he had he had been my guitarist. We had worked together on a lot of things before he went with Nat Cole. And so he, uh, 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 you know, he said, well, you know, as long as you if you're going to get married, man, I mean, you know, come on up here, maybe we can we can help you get a get a, a better place. Uh, uh, this was a possible uh, possibility to have our own place and 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 really bring up a family, and uh, which is just what we did. I mean, I, I mean, the Riverton had. Uh, 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 concert singers there. We had we had uh, all kinds. Of, uh, Paul Paul Robeson's uh, son was living there, and so he would come by to see us. And, uh, I don't know. It was it was it was a very exciting uh, uh, place to be in. I think also the men in Riverton, they help support the young men in sports in a healthy way. One funny story that I have about my father and. and growing up is that he used to play touch football with us and, and um, instead of calling penalties for holding or offsides or roughing the passer my father used to um, penalize all the kids in the Riverton he used to penalize us 15 yards for using improper syntax uh, using double negatives or even cursing from time to time. It really was a supervised recreational park where you had Dolly King was the supervisor Ms. Bell and, and Ms. Gates um, pretty much was running the show here. Where? Pop Gates used to play with the Hall of Renaissance. Well, one of the things that was so interesting about this playground was that when this playground was open at 9 o'clock, we had kids out there playing because we had no internet, we had no PS2, we had no games. The only thing that we had was the recreational area. I was the, the first queen of Riverton, and my entire dress and the whole, all of the decorations and everything was made of crepe paper. Um, most uh, exciting about uh, being growing up in Riverton was the fact that our playground was just not. Um, it was supervised play. 
at our play was directed towards certain um, festivals that we would have. We were truly like an, an oasis in Central Harlem. It was it was terrible that that we haven't uh, uh, really utilized the fact that these people were as creative as they were, who were doing it the thing things that were as timely as they were, and uh, yet we as a community community haven't uh, uh, documented them to the extent. That we I'm glad that you're doing what you're doing here. Today.